So I'm not sure if you knew this, but I just looked this up and the average person spends 172 minutes daily checking personal emails and 149 minutes on work emails. So that's over five hours per day just on email management. Now, what I've gone ahead and built here is a personal assistant agent that's connected to your email. So I connected mine to Gmail, which has access to this email agent tool, which is this right here, which has access to our MCP client server with all the different actions that we can perform in Gmail. Now imagine if you not only had to no longer write your emails, but you could also just have daily reports coming in of all the unread emails that you didn't get a chance to access. Furthermore, all of this can be managed directly through Telegram by a voice chat. And so right now I'm going to demo that for you and show you just how powerful this really is. Can you please pull in my unread emails from yesterday? I just sent that. If we open up the personal assistant agent, you'll see that a new request will start to run right here. It's hitting our email agent and that email agent is hitting our MCP where it'll hit this get many emails. So now we can see two emails came in. One was about an agent that didn't schedule. So now I'll respond. Can you get more context on the first email from Ilya Benjamin on why the agent did not schedule? Please draft an email saying that I will look into this, follow up with why it didn't successfully schedule the call. It is most likely a prompting thing that can easily be fixed in the global state settings and that I would have an answer for him by the end of the day. And there you go. I drafted this message, said, hey, I need the message ID. Please drop this as a new email instead to Ilya. And now if you look, you can see that this email was successfully drafted. So the power here is just absolutely incredible. And all this can be handled through voice, which is super cool. So no, no longer needing to type. And in today's video, we're going to be going through this entire setup, how you can build it for yourself. And all these automations will be available for completely for free in no code nation. We're at 1.7 K members and going strong. And with that being said, let's dive into how you can build this yourself. Okay, guys. So to start, we're going to hop in here and we are going to add Telegram on message and we're going to have to connect our credentials. So let's go ahead and create that right now. Okay, guys. So once you have Telegram installed, all you're going to look to do is find the bot folder and we're going to hit start and then we're going to send the command new bot. And then you're going to have to give it a name and then you're also going to have to give it a username. So here I did and right underneath here, it will provide you with an API token. So now we're going to head back to N8N. We're going to click create new credential and we're going to paste in our access token right here. We could hit save and you see now, now this connection has been tested successfully. Now we can just make this active and we can test the workflow by sending it a message. So now I just went ahead, I sent it a message. You can see right here, we had execution come in. We're going to copy that to editor. And if you look at what was sent, we have the message ID, we have the chat ID, we have the date and we have the text. So the first thing that we're going to do is add, we're going to add in a switch. And we're going to just compare the two because we can also send voice notes. So if I send it a voice note right now, hello, how are you doing today? And we look at this execution that just fired, you'll see the difference, right? So we get an audio file. And so now for the text, what we can say is like, hey, text is not empty here, right? Text exists. We can rename the output text. We'll go ahead, we'll save that. And then if we look at this next one, the file ID will have to exist for voice. So we can add another routing rule and we'll say file ID also exists. And we'll name this to voice. So now we have our two inputs where it's either going to be text or it's going to be voice. For the first thing that we're going to have to do for voice is we're going to come into make an HTTP request. It's going to be get and we're going to be hitting this specific endpoint. So we just need bot and our API token right here. So we'll just paste in our API token and then we'll need the file ID. So if we go and test this step right now at the switch, hey, we know that this is voice. We now have access to that file ID, which is right down here. So we could just drag that in. And now if we test this step, so now we've gone, we've grabbed that voice file. We have access to it. The next thing that we need to do is download that voice file. So it's going to be a very similar HTTP request here. Another get request, except this time we're going to be sharing that file path. So this that we see right here, file path. So we can get rid of this file path, just like that, drag this in. And then once again, replace your bot token with your API key. We'll test this step now. And now you can see that we have access to this file and we tossed in an open AI transcribe recording. Now if we go and we transcribe it, you'll see the text. Hello, how are you doing today? Which is what we sent successfully. Perfect. And then for text, we can just send that directly to our intent classifier. So guys, I was just browsing a little bit. Looks like they do have a get a file action here. And all you need is the file ID at that point. So it makes things a lot easier and less 
HTTP request. So we'll just delete both of these just like that. Yep. So once again, all you have to do is drag in this file ID. Now we have this get file, same thing, transcribe recording. So we'll just test this step right now. And now if we test this step, we'll get the same audio recording. Perfect. Now from there, we're going to add in an AI agent and we're going to change this to define below. And then you can see here, we could set the, just drag and drop the text message in, and then we'll do the exact same thing here. So we'll hit save. Now we'll get the text. So we could test this step. Now we get the text. And so you see, you can no longer see that text. So what we're actually going to have to do before this is add one more step, which is going to be a set field and that we're going to set to text and we're going to drag in our message just like that. And if we test the step, now we have text. Now we come in here and now we can see that both of these fields will be able to output to this AI agent. We're going to have to choose our chat model. So I'm going to go with open AIs 4.1. We're going to need memory. So we'll provide it with some simple memory. We'll change this to define below and we can set this to the chat ID. So if we just test this step, okay, we need simple memory. So what we're going to do is come in here. We'll just set this to one, two, three. Then we'll test this step again. And now we should be able to grab the chat ID. So that's what we're going to be using in the simple memory here. So I'll just grab this chat ID from the telegram trigger, drop it in here. And now it'll have memories of every single conversation. We can hit save. Now for different tools, I'm going to provide it with a think tool when it needs to do more complex thinking. We'll also give it a calculator in the case it needs to do some math. And then we need to find the system prompt. So now we're going to add a system message. And we're going to say you are the AI orchestrator, manages various personal tasks. You have access to the email agent. And you can also respond directly to the user as a personal assistant if no specific request is called. And then we'll add a telegram response at the end of this. So we'll choose send a text message. We are going to need that chat ID. So go back to the start, grab the chat ID. Text is going to be the output. We can leave the rest the same. Now we get it save. And then we're going to have to provide it with a tool. So we're going to call another N8N workflow. And we're going to create that right now. So we're going to say call this tool for the email agent. Now we're going to have to make a new workflow. And we'll call this the email agent. And we'll name this other one the personal assistant agent. So now we can come in here and we can choose our email agent. Okay, now we need to come in here. And this is just going to be executed by another workflow. And because we have this set to call that email tool, because we have this set to email, it'll hit this email tool, come down here and execute this next step. And then we're going to connect that to an AI agent. We can hit save. And now we can go ahead and just test this right now. So I'll actually delete the AI agent for a second, just so we can get some information down here. We'll hit save here as well. And then I'll send a message to fetch my emails. Now, if we look at the executions right here, you see that it's come down and hit this email agent. So now if we come in here that we see that we have this one execution that's run. Now we can add in our AI agent and we want to grab this query. So we'll change this to define below and drag in our query. And then we're going to define its role here. Okay. So I just came up with this system prompts which really is defining what's the identity, what are the core capabilities, what are the available MCP tools with the message operations, the thread operation. So essentially the different tools that it has access to. Okay, so there we go. And then from there, we're going to add in a chat model. So we're going to choose OpenAI once again, choose 4.1. We'll give it simple memory again. And so in order to add the simple memory, what I'm going to do is come into here. When executed by another workflow, we're going to do query equal to a string. And then we're also going to do the chat ID. Hit save. We'll go back to this workflow. We could just copy this to the editor, hop into here. Now you see that we have the query and we have the chat ID. So we can let the model define the query, the description, message or the request from the user. And then the chat ID is going to come from the beginning telegram chat ID right here. Now we could save. We could just test this step. You can see it hit this. We do have an error with the MCP client, but let's see if it's still fired. We can debug this in the editor. Okay, so let's delete the MCP client for a second here. We'll hit save and we'll trigger this again. Now we can come back here. We can look at the executions. You can see that now we have the query and we have the chat ID. So this we can change to define below and we'll grab that chat ID, drop it up here. And now we can add in our MCP server we're going to have to create a new MCP server. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do is add a step. We're going to search for MCP, MCP server trigger. We're going to grab that production URL. And so to add that new URL, you're going to open up your Cloud desktop. You're going to go to file settings, developer, N8N, or whatever it is that you named it. If this is your first time, just hit edit config. It'll bring you right here to your Cloud desktop config. So go ahead and open that up. And then you can see right in here, that's where we're going to be dropping it in. Okay, now we can add in our tool. So we'll add in Gmail. And we're also going to need to copy this server URL, head back to our email agent and drop it in right here. 
And now we're going to be adding in the different tools. So obviously we want to send email one. So we'll name this send email. So then we're going to need message. We're going to do get many. We can just set return all to define automatically by the model. Then we'll add the next one. This one is just going to be get. So this will get the full email content. So it'll retrieve like email threads. You know, it's good for, for reply drafting. Then we're also going to be adding the message reply. So this is how we'll be replying, replying to those daily emails. Then we're going to add in a thread get. This will allow it to understand the full conversational content. Then we'll do draft create. So it can create drafts for us if we want to use that before approval. Then we'll also add message add label, which will allow us to organize and follow up tracking. Perfect. Now we'll also add a think tool. If ever we need to do some thinking, we'll hit save. This will be the Gmail MCP. Okay, awesome. So now all of that is set up. So let's pull this back up and let's see if it works. So can you please fetch my unread emails from yesterday? Now if we look at here, you can see that it's running. And actually, I do believe I'll need to reset Claude so it has access to the rest of those MCP tools. But we'll see how it does. You can see this is running. And if we look here, oh, nothing is hit here yet. So let's just go ahead and stop both these executions. We'll reopen Claude now that we've added in all these tools. If we come down here, we should see we now have access to eight for N8N, which are the Gmail tools. And let's try it again. Okay, so it looked like it failed here when it went to fetch the rest of these emails. We did get a message back though saying there are no unread emails from yesterday's match criteria, excluding automated notification calendar messages. We might want to broaden our search. Can you create a draft email for me and send it to kevin at targetdial.co? I want the message to include upcoming work for business for voice AI. So let's try something like that. Let's see how it performs. So we just got a response back. You can see right here. A draft email has been created with the subject upcoming work. And you can see that now we have this upcoming work with hi, Kevin, best regards your name. So maybe we want to change your name to make sure all email sign offs are with instead of it being your name, it should be my company name. So if we look at what it responded with, you can see the output was what the response was. And if we go into the Gmail MCP, we can see that this came through. It hit the create draft, the subject and the message. So here we could set in a two email for that draft. So that's why that two wasn't coming through. And then we could also add in here, make sure all sign offs are best Kevin Hogan CEO. Now we can hit save. And so that just shows you the power of using these tools. Obviously can many emails, it seems like it timed out maybe because I had it set specifically to return all. So maybe we want to change that instead of it being return all, we could set it to a, a fixed value, go back to fixed, turn off return all, and maybe set the limit to, you know, let's do 20 for now, if we are going to get many, we'll hit save. Yeah, you can see the immense power of this. So hopefully you got value. All these automations will be available completely for free in our community, no code nation, feel free to join, drop a question and uh, look forward to seeing you grow. Cheers.